Thank you very much indeed and welcome to another year and another series. I have some fascinating guests lined up. One or two of course had to make their excuses. Joan Collins was still locked in her honeymoon suite but she's expected to emerge any year now. <laughs> uh, George Byrne said that at his time of life he likes to be in bed by nine o'clock. If not he goes home. <laughs> Sophia Loren very kindly sent a telegram all in Italian which ended non dimentica which I believe means don't bother to repair the automobile. And, uh, <laughs> Michael Hesseltine's office said he wasn't available. He'd gone off to join the cast of Dynasty. He's, uh, <laughs> he's playing the part of a helicopter pilot. <laughs> we do have a full complement of guests tonight. And I don't know how my first guest got here, but I'm very pleased that he did. He is the Orson Welles of Chiswick, Mel Smith. Well, you're looking very well. How do you explain this? Uh, well, I've been in Australia, Michael. I've been uh, doing a little tour over there, a little two-man show with, uh, with Griff. And uh, Griff Rees Jones, I don't know whether you've ever heard of him at all. <laughs> we, uh, we, do a little, we do a little show together. Yeah. A couple of gags and a song, a bit of smut, that sort of thing. And, it, um, <clears throat> and it's gone down very well, and uh, we also got some sunshine. So it's do nice. they understand you over there? Do you have to adapt the material? Oh, I mean, uh, they see so much British television. I mean a lot of British television, so there's no real... Pro I mean, un understanding them can be a bit of a problem. Um, they, they have very, very sort of strange words for things. I mean, I'm a stubby holder. Do you know what a stubby holder is? Cigarette holder? No, I thought... Well, I thought it was, I thought it was a pair of underpants, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, truly, I, I really did. But it's, um... It's, uh, it's, the little, it's the little sort of canister that sort of holds a short bottle of beer. Um, and they kind of shorten everything, so it's like Barbie instead of barbecue, yeah. and yachty instead of yachtsman, and... They all... instead of <laughs> well, they all sound alike to me. I mean, you can't mm. tell what part of Australia anyone is from. It's the same accent, only more so. But are they different from state to state? Yes. Oh, very much so. Actually, I mean, once you're there for a while, they do begin to sound a little bit, uh, a little bit different. But like, uh, the ones in Adelaide, for example, are regarded... We are, we are the settlers. We actually came here by choice. And people in Sydney and Melbourne are all convicts. Um, <laughs> that's quite true. Quite true. Uh, the people in Sydney uh, and the people in Melbourne have terrific rivalry with each other. They both think that they're the cultural centre of the country. They all think that the people in Perth are completely backwards. Um, and all four of them think that Brisbane is just lunatic. Um, I mean, are they law-abiding people? Well, I mean, in Brisbane, they have to be. I mean, in Brisbane, you do have to be. It's a bit, because there's a man there called Joe Bielke peterson who runs Queensland, which is where Brisbane is, in, in, a, in a totally kind of autonomous way. And uh, it's just... In fact, while, in fact while, while we were there, they actually came up with a new law in Queensland. Um, this is quite, quite for real. Uh, a new law up there which said that uh, no bar could serve uh, any sexual deviant or homosexual uh, at all. How'd and, you get uh, on? Uh, well... <laughs> Very good. Sorry. Actually, if you're looking for a job... Uh, <laughs> um, and absolutely truthfully, the Licensed Vittlers Association, or whatever the hell they were, said, um, well, how do we know if people are sexual deviants or, uh, or homosexuals? And the government said, well, you ask them. So, <laughs> rather odd. And you walk in and you say, can I have a beer? And he says, are you a child molester? And you say, yes. And he said, I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't tell you. It's a very bizarre idea. What about the difference between Australia and New Zealand? Is there a great difference? Oh, well, yes. I mean, New Zealand is sort of closed most of the time. Uh, they, uh, was it? Barry Humphreys had a wonderful line. Uh, New Zealand's got sort of 13 million sheep, 3 million of whom think they're human beings. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little bit... It's, it's a little bit quiet. It's a little bit quiet. And, and they really do have terrific rivalry. Uh, there's, there's actually no rivalry like it in Europe at all. Do they all um, drink Castle Main 4? Castle Main 4. Well, yes, they do. In fact, actually, uh, we, did a, we did a gag in New Zealand, which they just loved. They went through the roof because we, we did a gag about why is it called Castle Main 4X? Because Australians can't spell beer. 
<laughs> loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I mean, any any joke that you can do about you know New Zealand in Australia and vice versa, they just they just adore it. Talking about differences. Now you and and Griff have travelled many miles together. You've mm. worked a lot together. But how similar are you in temperament? In temperament, hardly at all, really. Um, very very different people. I mean, obviously I'm. Suave, sophisticated, good-looking. Uh, <laughs> Griff, <laughs> Griff, uh, Griff, sort of grumpy and difficult to work with. But uh, <laughs> we, um, no, I mean, we basically get on because we share the same sense of humour. But um, I mean, other than that, we're very, very different people. What about lifestyles then? I mean, do you, you've done well. Do you live in splendour? Um, well, I know. I mean, Griff. I mean, Griff has a gigantic mansion in Suffolk. I have a furnished sock in Notting Hill. <laughs> 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 but it's a size twelve. Though, <laughs> <it must be. laughs> No, I mean, we are, we are quite different. I mean, I tend to be a bit of a, you know, a lover of the nightlife, and I, um, I like sort of company and sort of socialising, eating, mm -hmm. that sort of business. Uh, Griff's sort of much more involved with his family, really. He's just had a little kid, so he's much more involved with that. Do you spend a lot of money on your jacket? <laughs> this was in a sale, actually. It's very, very reasonable. Very, very reasonable indeed. But it, it is new, and thank you for spotting it, uh, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> do you splash out, though? I mean, are you gregarious? I do splash out if the shirts are too tight. Yeah, <laughs> but, um... <laughs> yeah. it's a very horrible sight, I'm sure. Yes, yeah, so I, I was just... I'm, I'm Actually, can I get you a drink at all? It, it, it's, it's a bit like sitting in the corner of a pub Have here, mine. isn't it? It is rather, yes. Would you a like... bonquette we're on. So, thank you very much. Cheers. That's Cheers. my very... It looks like water, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. Wow! <laughs> 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 so um, you go out with friends, you enjoy a mm. good time, obviously, and yeah. you're, you know you can afford to uh, to buy good things. And I, you have a reputation as a gourmet. You enjoy good grub. Um, I enjoy eating. I don't really pretend to know that much that much about food. And I'm not a great cook. I mean, I manage a bolognese occasionally, that sort of business. Um, I hate nouvelle cuisine. That's uh, I mean a real hatred of mine. I mean, um, what's so know, awful? Well, it's I just find it the most ridiculous kind of cuisine. I mean, a a it costs a fortune, and b it arrives on plates like that big. You know, you've had it. And uh, maybe you're lucky, you get maybe one scallop sitting in the middle of it. <laughs> and sort of surrounded by a kind of green sauce. Mm. And it's sort of served with this kind of like, you know, and you think, well, what on earth? <laughs> what on earth is all this? It's a bit pointless. It, absolutely. In fact, I, I, went to a, I went to a place in, in Sydney, uh, which was a Nouvelle Cuisine restaurant, and they had medallions of water buffalo. <laughs> now, I don't know whether anybody here can imagine uh, an animal like a water buffalo yielding a thing called a medallion. <laughs> I mean, a hunk, you know, or a sort of... Yeah. But, uh, no. And, 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 that, and, and again, I mean, it, it comes from a water buffalo, this thing, but it was like two tiny, tiny little pieces of meat. What part of the buffalo were they from? <laughs> I didn't think it was that kind of show, actually, my friend. <laughs> well, then, we'll talk about you again. Um, <laughs> actor, writer, director, would-be rock star. You're a busy mm. fellow, as they say in the trade, a yep. workaholic. Do you never actually get time to just lie and stare at the ceiling? I... No, if I get that, I, I like to do a bit of plumbing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I do get any spare time. Um, no, I get bored very easily, is the truth. You must be a bit the same yourself. I mean, you're never off the box, are you? Yes, often, yeah. Oh, you're not. You're not. I must say, by the way, I'm very disappointed this evening. I wanted you to be wearing a cardigan. Why? Because I always used to enjoy watching your cardigans on Give Us a Clue. <laughs> it was the, the main reason I watched the programme. Well, honest. I had to give them back when I left, you see. That's, <laughs> that's the real time. Yeah. But, no, I mean, uh, I, en I just enjoy, I enjoy work and I, and I get bored very quickly, so the more of it, the better. What is this Swedish connection that I've heard about? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it had got out, quite honestly. <laughs> Yes, yes, the shirt front has gone again. No, tell me. Really. <laughs> well, well, I went, out, I went out there early in the year to do a, to do a little film mm. called uh, An Englishman in Sweden. And uh, I played Sweden, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and it was, it was a, little, it's a little comedy film. They, they, they're great lovers of Not the Nine O'Clock News out there, which, mm. of course, I did years ago. And, uh, and they wanted uh, to do this. It's about a 40-minute silent film. So I went out there and did that. So you didn't need to speak any Swedish? No, 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 not at all. Strange language. Yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, yes, yes, it is. They're very, very, very strange people, actually. I mean, very you know, likable. I mean, I would certainly, certainly wouldn't put them down, but they're, um, they're very odd. I mean, like you do something in front of a camera and you really sort of, you know, go for it and overact and pull dark faces. You know, all the things we get paid money for. Mm. And. Uh, and I go, your step was very, very, very funny, Mel. Uh, okay, now we go on to the next setup. And <laughs> <laughs> very good. 
and obviously going down a storm, you know. Um, you know, very, very, kind of very relaxed, very laid back. I, I have a theory they must be putting something in the coffee over there because, <laughs> because they drink gallons of coffee and uh, they really are very, very laid back. I remember as a kid, if anybody mentioned Sweden, people would say, free love. That mm. was the phrase that always I connected. Know. It cost a fortune over there as well. <laughs> That wasn't rehearsed, by the way. <laughs> Not at all. Thank you very much. Sorry. Sorry, Michael. Yeah, well, so, what about the social life? I mean, they're very laid back, you're saying that They're way, very, but... yeah, very laid back, and um, they have... Uh, while I was there, the, the, the oddest thing, I went to see a show, uh, Hot Gossip. You know, Hot Gossip. Mm -hmm. And they were doing a show in town, and uh, I thought I'd go along and see them. And I heard they'd been doing brilliant business, and I, I got there on a Friday night, and it was a third full, that was all. And the guy who took me there, a Swedish guy, said, I don't understand it. I, I don't... Um, it's been full all the time. And he said, ah! Of course, it's the crayfish season. <laughs> so I thought that explained everything, obviously. <laughs> really, ab ab absolutely true. And everything stops there for the crayfish season, which is a very bizarre thing. I mean, they're, they're very, very small crayfish. They're like um, little... Lo they're like sort of... Uh, they're like sort of the Marty Kane of the fish kingdom. They're sort of oh. skinny and sort of, you know, long sort of little pincers. And, uh, and you suck them. I mean, you don't really... Well, you do eat them as well, but you kind of go... <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and I mean, and at that time of year, you go into really high-class Swedish restaurants, and everybody's sort of sucking these, <laughs> sucking these things. It's Perhaps that's why their language has evolved, because they do sound as if they're speaking English backwards. Mm, yeah. that's it. Could be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> could be. Could be. Could be. <laughs> I do a whole sketch like that, couldn't you? Mm, mm. you? Perhaps you have in this film. Um, no, I haven't actually. Um, but why <laughs> do you write it, Michael? You I'll, write it, love, and we'll try and get I'll it. I'll write in it too. <laughs> what about their television? Ah. Well, it's hilarious, to be quite honest with you. They have two stations, both government, uh, both government run. <laughs> and, uh, and they don't differ at all, at all. They kind of tend to start about 7 o'clock at night and finish about 9.30. Um, <laughs> 7 o'clock on a Saturday night, I promise you, I went into the hotel room and switched it on, and there was on, um, on one channel, there was a, a little girl crawling around playing with some building bricks and a Swedish voice over uh, going on which I didn't understand, so I turned over, and on the other side there was a man sitting in a library, a very old man, talking straight to camera, just in Swedish. And I thought, this is 7 o'clock on a Saturday evening. I mean, you know, expect, you know, just turned backwards and forwards, and that was, you know, that was it. I mean, the programming's pretty dull. They have Dallas, of course, or Dallas. Dubbed into <laughs> Swedish. Yeah. Uh, subtitled. Yeah. Yeah. They do actually all speak English. I mean, that's, that's the most fantastic thing about them. Well, that's spoil the whole thing. <laughs> and the reason I've been pumping you about Sweden mm. will become apparent in just a moment. So if you'd just like to relax, I will thank you warmly from the bottom of my heart, Mel Smith. Thank, thank you. Thank you.